Hi, I'm Sylvia, and I'm so glad to be with you today as we dig into 40 days of prayer study. So the first couple of weeks that we have been in this study, first we learned the purpose of prayer, and then we went into how to pray with confidence. And so you might be saying, that's great, I've bought in, yes, prayer is important, I wanna pray bold, confident prayers, but what if I don't know how to pray? Well, the disciples of Jesus had the same question, and they asked Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. And so Jesus, in his own words, gave us a pattern for prayer, and that's what we're going to dive into today. It's a 10-step process that is modeled after the Lord's Prayer. He taught the disciples and us how to pray, not what to pray, but how to pray. And so if you'll turn with me in your Bibles or in your book to Matthew 6, 9, and Jesus says, this then is how you should pray. Not what, but how. And so the Lord's prayer is a pattern for prayer. So let's pray it together. You can follow along. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. The Lord's Prayer is a 10-step pathway that'll help you develop a deeper and closer relationship with God. So let's dig into those first five steps today. Step one, and we find this in the very beginning of the prayer where he says, Our Father in heaven. And this is a prayer of connection. And it is where I remember how much God loves me. Ephesians 2, 17, 19 says it this way. May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. And may you be able to feel and understand, as all of God's children should, how wide, how deep, and how high his love really is, and to experience this love for yourselves, though it is so great that you will never see the end of it or fully understand it. And so here we see um, Paul telling the Ephesians, may you know how God's love is for you. And so that's what we do where we say our Father in heaven. We remember how much God loves me, that God's love is long enough to last forever that it's wide enough to embrace everything about you. It's deep enough to pull you out of your deepest despair and high enough to look, overlook every offense. Boy, do I need that. Step two. Step two is in the phrase where it says, hallowed be your name. And this is the prayer of refocusing ourselves. And this is where I tell God how much I love him. You know, sometimes um, as a staff, we pray together every week uh, as a church staff, and sometimes we just begin the hour by just taking turns and declaring out loud who God is and why we love Him. We, we go around the room and we just declare, God, you're so magnificent, you're so patient, you're so kind, you are good, your, your love never ends. Lord, you are fair and just. Father, you are all-knowing and all-powerful. You care so deeply for me. And we just declare who God is, the Creator. And in fact, the Bible tells us in the names um, that are, are in the Bible of who God is. Your, he's your Creator who made you. He's your Father who loves you, your Savior who forgives you, and your Shepherd who guides you. He's your shield who hides you, and he's your counselor who gives you wisdom, your comforter who gives you strength. I love that about him. And the absolute best friend you will ever have. Psalms 107.15 puts it this way. Give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. That's for us. Step three, and this is found in the part of the Lord's Prayer that says, Your kingdom come. It is the prayer of cooperation with God, and it is where I offer my life to be used for God's purposes. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. 
You know, we all are going through some real troubled times um, now, but always. I mean, we have troubles big and small. And um, no matter how big or small those troubles are, or when you just feel like you're in the pit, we can always be confident in the fact that God is watching out for us and working everything out for our good. And we have to claim that when we pray. We have to declare those things so that we don't become overwhelmed with all that's going on in the world. Romans 8.28 says, We know that all that happens to us is working for our good if we love God and are fitting into His plans. His plans, not my plans. That's a hard one for me. I don't know about you. We have to make this choice daily. And sometimes I actually have to make it more than once a day because, boy, do I have my own plans. But if we choose, we need to choose to follow His plans for our lives, not our own. Romans 12, uh, 1 in the message version, which I love the message version. It, it, it puts a lot of feeling into the scripture in a lot of words. Here's what Romans 12, 1 says. So here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. I'm going to say that again because I needed to hear it again. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. Step four, and this is in the Lord's Prayer where He says, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is the prayer of surrender. And this is where I say, I give God my pain and sorrow. You know, Jesus prayed on his way to the cross. You know, he knew what was coming. He knew what was before him. He was grieved deeply to the point of sweating blood. And this is what he prayed. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. He wanted out of this horrible situation he was in. Take this cup from me. But he follows that with, yet not what I will, but your will. And you know, when we are in pain or when we have sorrow, we just want that to end as soon as possible. We want to be out of it. And sometimes that's what our prayers are. We try to lead ourselves out of our pain and, and suffering. We try to lead others out of their pain and suffering. But there is a way to take in suffering and hold tight to it. For as long as it may take for God to work things out, because Jesus is in the suffering with us. So instead of asking God, Lord, end this, pray for God's will to occur. Talk to yourself, tell yourself, declare and pray out loud what you know to be true. What you know to be true about God, what you know to be true about yourself as his child, and the confidence that you have in your future as a follower of Christ. And then step five, and we find this in um, the part of the Lord's Prayer that says, give us this day our daily bread. This is the prayer of dependence. God wants us to depend on Him. Philippians 4.19 says, my God will meet all your needs. Now I want to bring your attention to the needs part, not your wants. He will meet all of your needs. He knows what we need. He knows what you need. He knows everything. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you need. And he promises to meet all of them. God wants us to be dependent upon him all the time. Not just when we're desperate and in the pit. And he wants us to depend on him one day at a time. I don't know about you, but I can get way out there looking about, oh my gosh, look at all of this. Look how long this is going to take. This is a big problem. This is a big issue. And sometimes I have to just bring it back in. Say, depend on God, Sylvia, one day at a time. He'll meet all your needs. So let's pray through these five steps together. Focusing on what you would pray, because you, your issues are unique and um, they're specific to your life. You know, the way that you feel about God, your emotions toward God are going to be different than mine. The way He views you is going to be different. Um, so whenever you don't know how to pray, pray through these steps. And in fact, you might even want to have a note written down about these five steps when you go into your prayer closet or in your car or wherever you pray. Make these prayers work for you.
Okay, so let's pray through these five steps. Our Father in heaven, this is where I tell God how much he, I thank God for how much he loves me. Thank you, God, for loving me as, as a sinner, how wretched I am for all the times I get it wrong. Just thank you for loving me, God. Hallowed be your name. This is where I tell God how much I love him. Lord, I love you for who you are in my life. I love you for saving me. I love you for giving me your son, Jesus, for giving me your Holy Spirit to guide me. I love you for how patient you are with me. I love you for how powerful you are and how fair and just you are, God. Thy kingdom come. And this is where we pray for God's plan and purpose for my life. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray your will, your will, not my will, for all the things in my life, for my family, for my business or my job, for my body, God. I pray your will for everything in my life. Thy will be done. Surrender. God, I give it all to you. I just, I offer it up to you. I surrender my future, my relationships, my finances, God. I surrender my hurts and my time to you. And lastly, give us this day our daily bread. And this is where I trust God to meet my needs. And this is where you tell him what your needs are. Just for today, Lord, I pray that you will give me the peace and the strength that I need. Give me rest, Father. Give me good rest when I lay my head down at night. Father, give me wisdom today to tackle what is before me. Give me your wisdom, Father. Thank you, Lord. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So that's our pattern for prayer. It's going to look different every time based on where you're at, what your situation is, what your needs are. But those are the first five steps. Next week, we're going to learn the remaining five steps that are in the Lord's Prayer as we delve deeper into our pattern for prayer. God bless you.